Hello, my name is Brent Doty, Senior Education Coordinator with the Edwards Aquifer Authority. Our authority manages, enhances, and protects the Edwards Aquifer, which supplies water to over 2 million South Central Texans. Today I'll be talking about stormwater runoff and best management practices or the best way to help prevent some of that non-point source pollution from entering the aquifer. Speaking of non-point source pollution, there are two main types of pollution that we encounter, point source and non-point source. Point source pollution can be traced back to a single identifiable incident, say for example a leaking underground or above ground storage tank, uh, waste discharging from a factory, things like that. Non-point source pollution, however, is the cumulative effects of pollution across a broad area. Today we're going to be looking at a neighborhood setting. In neighborhoods there are lots of different things that can contribute to non-point source pollution. We have uh, we have oil leaking from cars, we have over-fertilization and, and pesticides used on lawns, pet waste, a lot of different things happen in neighborhoods that can eventually end up in our, in our water system and that's what we want to prevent. So today we'll be talking about uh, filtration basins and in particular we're talking today about a sand filtration basin. So as the runoff water enters the basin it's designed, a well-maintained basin is designed to stop at least 80% of the suspended sediment. Now that sediment can be, can have these, can have that non-point non source pollution attached to it. So it's designed to, to stop a lot of that. So what we have here is, a, in the middle we have a rock wall called a gabion. As that stormwater enters the stormwater basin, it'll be slowed down by that gabion first and larger particles will settle out. The smaller particles move on to the sand filtration basin where the smaller, smaller particles will be filtered out and eventually the cleaner water exits the system back into the watershed and possibly back into the aquifer if we're on the recharge zone. So you can see in creeks a lot of times we'll have sinkholes or other cracks that will lead down into the aquifer. So water on the recharge zone that's in a creek could eventually infiltrate into the aquifer. And that's why it's so critical that we use a stormwater basin to stop some of this non-point source pollution before it enters our watershed. So right now what I'm going to do is add some contamination here in the form of a, I have three different representations. So we're going to add, we'll say that this is excess fertilizer on lawns, maybe some pesticides. And here we'll use this for to represent the oil leaking from cars. Sometimes people will change the oil in the backyard and, and then just pitch the oil out there, so that's not very good. And, uh, and we'll add some more non-point source pollution, maybe pet waste. And then I'm going to generate a rain event. So we're going to have it rain onto our neighborhood here. And you know when it rains real heavy you can see that water going down the gutter and eventually that's going to end up in a, hopefully in a stormwater basin. So here goes our, our contaminants as non-point source pollution. They enter our filtration basin and you can see a lot of it has been stopped by the gabion and a lot of it has been stopped by the sand filtration basin. And we have very clean water now entering the aquifer. And just to remember, I mean the aquifer is where uh, most of our drinking water is stored. So when we turn that faucet on, that, that water is uh, coming from the aquifer. So that is why it's so important to protect it. Unfortunately, not all stormwater basins are maintained this well. Uh, a lot of times the developers will add a stormwater basin and then when it's passed off to the neighborhood, they may not know uh, how it functions properly or how to maintain it. And at times they can end up looking kind of like this one. So this is a deteriorated basin. The gabion, the pores are clogged. There's significant erosion in the sand filtration basin. And so we'll conduct the same experiment here. We're going to add our contamination again to the neighborhood. The oil, the fertilizers, anything else you might find dumped out on, in the neighborhood. And then here's our rain event again. Here goes the non-point source pollution. Now unfortunately, the basin isn't stopping a whole lot of this pollution. 
a lot of these contaminants. It's going, a lot of it's going straight through the filtration basin into our watershed and a lot of it is getting into the aquifer and you can see some of it down there. So that's something we definitely want to prevent. Uh, there is another thing that can happen with these basins that's not very desirable and that is uh, if they become clogged. So the problem with the clogged basin is you can get a lot of stagnant water pooling up and that stagnant water can host mosquitoes, can host algae and a lot of other uh, disease causing pests. So again, just one more time, we'll add our contaminants. And then we'll add our rain event. And you can see we're having the water pool up in the basin and that's gonna be, it's gonna be prime territory for mosquitoes. And again, it's not doing a very good job at at filtering the, the point source pollution. When the water finally does make it out, it's going to have a lot of that stuff still in it. So the moral of the story here is uh, these basins are very important to help prevent or mitigate the causes of non-point source pollution. It's important that people understand what they're for and how to maintain them and to keep them maintained. Uh, this, this is a critical, critical way we can mitigate non-point source pollution. Now, some ways that you can help at your house is by, for example, cleaning up after your pets, keeping our cars well maintained, and only using adequate amounts of fertilizer and pesticides in our homes. For other ways to prevent non-point source pollution, check out our website at edwardsaquifer.org. Thank you, and uh, I hope you learned a lot today.